Hello folks and welcome. LMDE6 Cinnamon Desktop, which is not the same as Linux Mint 21.3 Cinnamon in some cases. There's quite a few similarities, but they're not identical. So I'm making a second video called What is DNS? I'll talk about what DNS is and what it can do for you. And also if you wanted to try out some free services, you can certainly make some changes on your network card. So why would I be doing two videos for Linux Mint for the same subject? That's because LMDE6 is not the same as Linux Mint 21.3. There's uh, quite a few similarities, but a uh, case in point is uh, if you have watched any of my 370 videos, I always begin with what I'm filming in. The screen and uh, screen resolution and also what kind of desktop. And there's a reason I do this. But uh, inevitably, I also get messages back too that they watched a video and it doesn't quite work like I stated on the video because they're using a different desktop. Case in point, uh, someone left me a message that they watched my video on Linux Mint 21.3 and they tried this terminal command and it didn't work for them. That's because LMDE6 doesn't use the same command. So I'm going to clarify that in this video. I'll be showing you a chart. I'll be showing you the command for verifying DNS and LMDE6 filming in 1920 by 1080. Welcome folks. Subscription key in the corner if you're not a subscriber with yellow brackets. So um, let me open up this uh, file that I showed on my previous video for 21.3. All right. So first of all, I added some lines in here based on that comment that one person made. So I added the lines down here. If you are using the standard installation LMDE6, then perform that in terminal. If you're using Linux Mint 21.3 Cinnamon, then perform that. I'm going to show you what happens when you do this here in LMDE6. One more time as a reminder. Even when I performed that command, it said LM213 across there on my video. Anyways, you'll see uh, not found. So if I use this command, however, just going to copy it and paste it in here for a second. It does find that. Too small for you? Filming in 1920 by 1080. So this one here only works if you're using 21.3 cinnamon. If you're using LMDE6, you should be using a command that looks like that. Standard installation. Well, now that I generated this, um, first of all, just wanted to make mention that I'm not using my ISP's DNS. I'll show you how and how to identify that and more importantly, how to make changes if you like. You can always stop this video and do screenshots of this screen right here. I'm going to move on from here. We're going to talk about DNS, the phone book of the Internet. We're going to start there. All right, tab one. Again, DNS is the phone book of the Internet. So DNS works in the background when you're using a web browser to resolve addresses like Google.com and Amazon.com into numbers. That's how this stuff works in the background. I have an application on my screen on my desktop that will simulate that. So even mobile mobile phones have DNS if you have a web browser. Most of the time you're using cellular DNS unless you're using Wi-Fi. So in addition to, to that, I'll talk a little bit about free services. If you don't like your ISP's DNS, or if you find it sluggish, or just want to try a different thing. All right, and that uh, here's a, another one from Livewire that shows uh, a short list. And I'll be using some of these. And they have a primary DNS server and a secondary. These are all free services, by the way. And uh, what dynamic host protocol is on your home router versus in an environment of large computers, uh, they usually have DHCP servers in some cases. But I'm going to talk about DHCP as a service on your home router. All right, and then I'm going to talk about the typical IP ranges on your home routers. Your home routers. Your home routers. So. Actually, I'll just go to Amazon. It'd be easier to do this with. So a typical router um, looks like that, maybe. 
unless you're renting one from your internet service provider. Okay, so we're talking about a typical home router here. I'll talk a little bit toward the end of the video about what the difference between an AC and an AX is and all that good stuff. But uh, generally these connect to um, your devices that are cable modems, possibly fiber optic, that kind of thing. And your internet service provider, ISP, provides you with DNS, domain name system. So domain name system or DNS works like this in the background. Now I made a small application here and it does work on whatever DNS I have currently installed. So it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I can change DNS rather quickly and this app will still work. So what I'm gonna do is first make it big. I've shown how to make this app before too, in my previous videos. So I'm gonna enter a human name, such as maybe google.com. And I'll give you a little bit of trivia like I did on the last video, if you haven't seen that one. So google.com is owned by Alphabet, but how many Linux servers does Google have? I'll let you ponder that one for some research. So I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna resolve that google.com to a number. That's how your web browser works in the background. So Google has lots of servers. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Uh, anyways, it resolved that one to 142 and change. Four sets of numbers. Your computer also has um, IP numbers that your router will dish out. I'll talk about that in a second. So here's a second trivia question and we're we'll also going to resolve this to a number. Amazon.com started off as a bookstore online, if you did not know. Amazon.com is where a lot of us go to shop for gardening tools and uh, there's a lot of products they have, let's put it that way. Uh, did you also know they have cloud services? And they, they provide cloud storage for a lot of companies. How many Linux servers do you think they have? Anyways, this will be resolved to a different number after DNS responds. So DNS responded with a 205 and change. So that's currently what Amazon is. That's what my web browser is gonna be using. And this is Google. So you're probably getting the idea that it does numbers in the background. Well, that's what's happening in the background here. So when you open up a browser and you click that, it's being resolved to a number. These are the human names we talk about. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is um, your home router. Maybe your ISP provided you with a router. Maybe they programmed it for you. Maybe you have no knowledge of what I'm speaking of, but at least you can just entertain yourself with some thoughts. Or maybe you are either purchasing a router or you have one at home. So let's talk about settings. So in here, I have a demo as, the, as in the same, interface card that I shown on the other video for the um, Linux Mint 21.3. This again is LMDE6. One more reminder down here. All right, so um, this network card is behind a firewall, so I don't really care about private information on this one. This one is never used online for anything other than just give you LFS demos, Linux for seniors. This one is not using the uh, ISP's DNS. It's got two sets of numbers on it. So we're gonna go and utilize this command right here. CAT forward slash ETC forward slash R-E-S-O-L-V dot C-O-N-F. Making that larger for you. So that is resolving that to two sets of numbers. So let's find out what type of service this might be. Well, that happens to be Cloudflare. All of this is a list of top free public DNS servers. You know, when I started out many moons ago, I, uh, I think there was only about five or 20, somewhere in that range of DNS servers in the world. And things have changed over time, of course. So anyways, that's currently what we have here. And I'm gonna minimize this because we're gonna come back and look at all the, the different changes. So I'm gonna to go to IP version four and I'm gonna turn this back to default. What you normally see on your machine. 
Normally when I do this, you need to reboot. However, I'm going to simulate a reboot by turning the interface off and then back on again. And what it's going to do is have the DNS for my default route. Now I have different connections, of course, and I'll have to make different changes if I need to, but I'm only going to be working with one. If you decide to do this yourself, just remember if you switch to another different uh, Wi-Fi point, you may have to redo this. Okay. It's, in, it's uh, independent. <clears throat> so right now I have a default of that number and also the DNS is the same. So let's talk a little bit about ranges. So your home router has these default ranges. 192.168.1.1 or 0 0.1. They both end in with 1. That's your home router's numbers. Number 1, head cheese. So your router always wants to be number 1 and it is. And it also has another service running on it. That's called DHCP, Dynamic Host Protocol. So let me talk about that for a second. So DHCP is just a mouthful. Um, it's a service that runs on your home routers, in most cases, not a server. You can also have independent uh, large environments, like in offices, that have a DHCP server. That's all it does is dish out IP addresses. But your home router is a little bit smaller on the scale, so it's going to be dishing out also IP addresses to your computers. Scenario is this. Who is our user for today? Mary. So Mary has a household member called Bob. Bob has a Mac computer. Your router doesn't care what type it is. The Mac computer gets turned on, and the Mac computer also has DHCP, and it broadcasts a signal and pick, gets picked up by this router. The router responds in kind and gives that computer an IP address which is different from this one. It could be anywhere from the number 2 to 254. That's the range. So the Mac computer could have like a 101 or 106 or whatever number the router decided to give it. But at the same time, it also told the Mac computer and this one to use this DNS. Domain name system, the yellow pages of the internet or the, what, or the phone book of the internet. So we can do our surfing. So this is how your typical home computer is looking. Default route and DNS are the same because your settings are set to automatic dynamic host protocol, not manually programmed in, and automatic DNS. We can change that though to test out if our home internet service provider has sluggish DNS or you're looking for a little bit of anonymity or privacy. I'm going to click that symbol over here, the hamburger menu, and hit private window for a second. A lot of you folks think you're, you're hiding information from your internet service provider. However, if you're using their uh, DNS, you are also the ISP is gathering information on you, or could. I'm not saying they always do, but they can. There's also web browsers that have a little bit more privacy, like Brave and others. Brave is only one web browser. There are others out there. For a little bit of privacy. But more importantly, when you're using the DNS provided by your ISP, um, they, they can certainly know where you went, whether you're in private mode or not. Alright, so that may be one reason you may want to think about maybe think about some of that privacy stuff. I'm not saying you get total anonymity when you do this. I'm just saying a little bit better privacy is what I'm getting at. So DNS is one of those that when you're looking up stuff and connecting, that it does the stuff in the background. All right. So as I use this app over here and I'm looking for, um, I don't know, BA.com. I think it's British Airways. I'm not sure. I get a, a number resolved and your web browser is doing this in the background. Okay. So currently I'm using what? I'm using the standard... DNS that comes from my router and my router gets it from the internet service provider, ISP. Now, if I chose to use one of these free services, I'll pick one out of a hat. Um, we'll use the, the ones. That's easiest. All right. There are four sets of ones here. 1.1.1.1. One dot one dot one dot one. I'm going to copy that. Okay. I'm going to put that in here. Then I'm going to click the second one because it has two numbers here. 
So that's the primary server and the secondary server they have. And again, these are free. You don't pay for these. 1.0.0.1. So it went red until I finished that. I'm going to leave this on for a second to let you see this. I had this opened earlier. Okay, you can see those. And I probably should have picked a different number. Yeah, I'm going to do this again. I'm, I apologize. Let me pick a different number. Let's go with uh, OpenDNS. Okay. We can also do it directly from their website. OpenDNS is owned by Cisco. I've been using this service for many years. I'm not promoting it. Just saying that I use it. Okay, I'm going to plug in that number there. We can always hand type this also. The long string of numbers here. So I'll do the same with the backup. When they do provide a primary and a backup, it's always good to have both, just in case one of the servers is having some maintenance done. Really never had any problems with this, but I'm gonna hit apply, and then I'm gonna restart the interface card. Simulating a reboot is what I'm doing here. At least Linux Mint gives you a nice option for that. All right, so technically I would, I'm only making the changes on this network here. Oh, so let's go take a peek at it this way. Now this looks like a whole bunch of numbers, but there's actually three sections to it. So I'll do it this way. I'm going to use the same thing, CAT. And now I have three sets of numbers instead of two. So the 208 twice, but I'm using two two twos and two twenties. And then, I'll, uh, then also the router's number. So that's three sets of numbers on DNS. Hopefully that was clear. So 208 again is um, commercial time too. Yeah, is open DNS. Okay. And again, um, I can close all that stuff now that you can see this. I'll repeat the command one more time. So does this still work? Yes, it should. I'll just type in ba.com. And uh, let me make this bigger for you. And more importantly, it resolved that to an address. The thing about DNS too, if it finds bad addresses, I'm gonna do ba.org as an example. And it's gonna to try to find that. And if it doesn't find it, it gives me an error. Name or service not found. So I'm going to use the same thing in my web browser by typing in ba.org. I'll let you see what you get here. So right now it's having difficulty connecting, isn't it? It sure is. It's trying to resolve that, but it's not happening. Hmm, having problems finding that site. Well, that's because it doesn't exist. So that's my little app that is doing all that. And I just changed DNS. You saw me using a different one earlier. So one more time, what am I currently using? Three of these. First one fails, goes to the next one. That one fails, goes to the next one. Do I really need three DNSs? No. So I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna right click this time and open up system properties, system settings this way. And then what I'm gonna do is go to the same connection point that I'm on and turn this off and hit apply and restart or reboot. Okay, that's simulating a reboot. And I'll turn the card back on. So I'm using Wi-Fi. Okay. So anyways. So now I only have two sets of numbers in here. To verify that, I can use that uh, command in LMDE6, which is that command there. And now you can see that I'm only using two instead of three. If you find that this works better for you than your current ISP, then so be it. However, you can always revert back. So let me open this back up again. There are plenty of free services out there. You may or may not like them. Maybe your ISP is working for you just fine. But maybe your ISP, because I have no idea what it is, um, maybe these may work faster for you. 
But if you decide, I don't like this, it's too slow, it's uh, not what I wanted, it's, uh, I wanna go back, then fine. Open up your interface, turn this back on, erase these numbers. That's all you need to do. And it, that will return your interface back to default. Do a reboot. As in my case, I'm just gonna turn this on and off because I don't wanna do a reboot and re refilm. And we're back to that. And you can confirm that with the terminal command also. And again, one more time with the terminal command. It is different on LM. LMDE6 is different than Linux Mint 21.3. Okay, right now you can see name server is a single entry with the same number as my router. All right, if you're still hanging on, I'm gonna give you some bonus information. And uh, you may not know what this is. 802.11 is the standard interface for wireless for these routers. And uh, here's the chart. It started in the old days of 97 when Wi-Fi became popular. And then it progressed to B, to A, and to G, then N, and AC, and AX are popular routers today. Okay, so if you're in the market, go to Amazon. And if you're looking for uh, routers that work well with um, smart light bulbs, ring doorbells, and um, some of the other toys, you always need to check what kind of bands they work with. A lot of your dual band routers will have 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. That's how fast they transmit. And you'll find that your, some of your smart light bulbs only operate on 2.4. Whenever you're shopping for a product, also read the details of what it requires to connect through your router because those smart light bulbs are normally used with applications like Alexa or Google Home and they require internet access. Just something to think about. So 802.11 is the standard for Wi-Fi. And here's the charts and adopted and all that, even the frequencies. Thank you for watching.